Very few things in this world are as elegant or as important as water. So now we're looking at a water molecule, which of course is, has a formula H2O, that's two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen bound together in a covalent bond. You recall that oxygen is electronegative. That means it tends to attract electrons to itself so that most of the electrons in this molecule are going to be around the oxygen atom most of the time. As a result, oxygen has a very slight, weak negative force. We have a symbol we draw here, negative, that shows that oxygen has a slight negative force. And each hydrogen atom is going to have a very slight positive force as a result. So oxygen is negative, the hydrogens each have a positive charge. Now given that oxygen has a slight negative charge all the time and hydrogen has a slight positive charge, they are able to attract one another in the following way. We have our water molecule right here, and now let's create another water molecule over here. So we've got the oxygen atom here, and we have two hydrogen atoms down here and down here. So that's H and H. Remember, the oxygen has a slight negative charge, the hydrogen has a, each have a slight positive charge. And now the negative charge of this oxygen atom is going to be attracted to the positive charge of this hydrogen atom so that a weak connection is formed between these two molecules. This is called a hydrogen bond. Now these hydrogen bonds have a lot of special qualities. The most important thing to remember is that they are very weak. And because they're very weak charges, they're, e they're easily formed but they're also easily broken. And this leads to a bunch of emergent qualities in water. These hydrogen bonds are constantly forming, but they're also breaking up. But because there are so many water molecules constantly in contact with each other, constantly attaching and then disconnecting and forming new bonds, at any given moment, a body of water is going to have several, if not most of its atoms connected in this way. This is what gives water its qualities, which we are going to explore today. These weak positive and negative charges on either end of a water molecule um, allow the water to have certain properties. The most important one we call cohesion, and that's the ability of something to stick to itself. So that, for example, one water molecule will stick to another, as we had said before, through the difference in their positive and negative charges. We have a, ba a bad drawing of a tree here, but we see that when water is moving through the tree, it moves from the roots of the tree all the way up into the individual leaves. And now when water leaves the leaf through evaporation like this, these arrows show the water leaving, more water is going to get sucked up into this place to replace the water that was lost. And that water in turn comes from the branches of the tree, which in turn comes from water in the trunk of the tree, which has been moving up the trunk from down underground where the roots are. Water is able to, to do this because it sticks to itself, and this property of water to stick, stick to itself is cohesion. One thing that aids it is that these drops of water will stick to the insides of the tubules in the plant that draw it upwards through which it travels. Water can stick to the sides of these tubes in the tree through what is known as adhesion. The ability of water to stick to other things is known as adhesion. Cohesion is when water sticks to itself. Adhesion is when water sticks to other things. So we have a drop of a, a molecule of water at this point in the tree. It will be pulled up by the water molecules above it through cohesion. And at the same time, it will not slip back down because it is sticking to the side of the tree, or the, the cells of the tree, through adhesion. You can see adhesion and cohesion in action by dipping a paper towel into some colored liquid. You'll notice how quickly the water seems to defy gravity by moving up through the fibers of the paper. 
This is the same way that water moves through the xylem of a plant stem or the trunk of a tree, which actually is a plant stem. Water also has the ability to absorb a lot of heat without making a significant change in its temperature. To understand this, remember the weak hydrogen bonds that are actually holding the individual water molecules together. Any heat is going to have to be absorbed breaking up these hydrogen bonds before it can cause the molecules to move and cause the, in, an increase in temperature. Remember there may be billions of these hydrogen bonds, so it takes a lot of energy just to get water to start to warm up. This necessary energy is called the specific heat of a substance. The specific heat is the energy necessary to increase the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. The specific heat of water is one calorie per gram. This means it takes one calorie of energy to raise the temperature of a gram of water by one degree Celsius. The specific heat of water is a lot higher than the specific heat of other substances. Because steel has a much lower specific heat than water, I can dip my fingers in the water and it's still just lukewarm. But if I touch the side of the pan, I'm going to burn myself. Ow! As our water heats up, the hydrogen bonds are broken. The individual molecules start to move faster and faster. Eventually some of them actually break free from the water around them. And they are no longer liquid, but they become a gas, water vapor. This is what causes the bubbles to form as the water is boiling. At this point we say the water is boiling, and it will continue to evaporate until all of the water has been converted from a liquid to a gas. This is known as evaporation because it is turned into a vapor. This ability of water to absorb lots of heat is what enables the coastlines to maintain their mild climate. So at this point you should understand how water is able to form hydrogen bonds and you should really realize and appreciate the significance of this. I've listed some of these main points on the screen in front of you, but really it allows water to absorb a lot of heat without changing temperature and it allows water to bond with a number of other substances. We'll be getting into the emergent properties of water that come from this unique ability to form hydrogen bonds in our next video. Thanks for watching.